Hello everyone and welcome to a new video in our channel. My name is Ahmed for Idionics and in this video we are going to talk about what is DevOps in plain English. For those of you who are not aware of the term or who have heard it several times or perhaps read it on forums, articles, you name it. DevOps is one of the buzzwords that have been around for the last years and many people just are not aware of what exactly it is. Some people think that DevOps is a new technology. Some other people think that it is a set of tools. A third group of people just add it to their resumes just to add some weight to the CV. But what is DevOps? I have been working with DevOps for several years now. And the most accurate definition that I have come to read is the following. DevOps is a set of practices intended to reduce the time between committing a change to a system and the change being placed into normal production while ensuring high quality. So, seems like DevOps is all about enhancing the process that has been already running for several years, perhaps several decades now. Software development. So, what's wrong with the current process of software development? What is, what's wrong with the traditional way of software development? To answer this important question, let's take a small example. Let's say that we have a company X that is developing a social media software, let's say something like Facebook. Okay. And one day the management team or a marketing or whatever is responsible for suggesting new ideas decided that they need to add a feature to the, the chat application of this software that enabled users to send emoticons along with text. You know, those smiley faces that people tend to share with each other on, on, on social media like WhatsApp, Twitter, Facebook, and so on. Let's say that our, that our company decided that it's time now to add this feature to their chat application. All right, so they hand the task to the development team. The developers open up their laptops, start writing code, start testing that code on their development environment, just a general test. Everything seems nice. Everything is running correctly and smoothly. So is this feature now ready to be delivered to end users? Unfortunately, not yet. It has to pass through several stages before that can happen. For example, it has to be handled by the quality assurance team first, where they are going to perform numerous tests on it, like quality assurance testing, user acceptance testing, integration testing, among others. Notice here that the quality assurance team has not started their work or cannot start their work until the development team has finished. All right. So now the quality assurance team has finished their work. Is it ready? Yes, it will be handed to a third team, which is the operations team, where they are going to deploy the code on production environments and also they are going to maintain it in the long run. So the process that I have just mentioned now in this hypothetical example is called the waterfall model. In the waterfall model, development procedure is divided into stages and those stages are stacked upon each other just like a waterfall. You have stage one, let's say information gathering or planning. Stage two, documentation, putting those information, those requirements that have been grabbed from the customer and from other sources into a well-defined document so that the rest of the teams can abide to this document. Then the developers start a work after they finish the quality assurance team is going to do their tests, as we have mentioned in the example. Then perhaps the security team is going to assess the application and find the security holes and bugs and return it back to the developers to do the necessary changes. Then the operations team is going to deploy it. So the main problem with this approach, which has been working for several years now, is very simple. We don't have time for this. We are living now in 2018. We are living now in a world where nearly every device that you see or touch in your daily life has got an internet connection, has got some sort of software running on it. Think about it now. Your handheld cell phone, your tablet, your laptop, your smart TV, even your refrigerator, your car, your hi-fi, your MP3 player, you name it. All the devices around us now are connected some way or another to the internet and they are running some sort of an application. So. With the world moving at such a fast pace, end users now are expecting software releases to be faster than ever. In the World 4 model, for example, an application could take from several months to several years to be complete. 
of course, depending on the complexity of the application and amount of features that need to be added. This is not acceptable by any means today. A company like Facebook, for example, is delivering an update twice per month. That is a software update every two weeks. A company with the size of Facebook, you know, all those, there are thousands of developers, thousands of software testers, thousands of operators, and the application is so huge. And despite all that, it is delivering an update every two weeks. So how is that possible? That is possible because since the start of this decade, companies start shifting to a new software development paradigm. Instead of using the waterfall model, they started using what's called the Agile model. In the Agile model, the scope is shifted towards the market. It's shifted towards the client. It's shifted towards the requirements that are ever changing. More emphasis is placed upon how fast I am going to develop this application so that I can add more and more features, fix more and more bugs. In the Agile model, software is developed in iterations, sometimes called sprints. You no longer have the waterfall model where the stages are going from up to down and you cannot start a new stage unless the previous one has finished. In an Agile model, it's like a sprint. Everything is connected to each other in one circle. When I explain the Agile model, I like to refer to an easy example. Imagine that you are going to develop a car. Imagine that the car is your software application and you are going to use the Agile model to develop it. If you are using the waterfall model, okay, you're gonna get the requirements for the customer. I need a vehicle that is going to move at a, at a speed that can reach like 100 miles per hour. It's gotta be, it, it's gotta have four wheels. It's gotta have a place for the driver and a place for three or four passengers, depending on its kind. It's gotta have a trunk and so on. So clearly you are describing a car. In the waterfall model, developers are gonna take these requirements, start working on them. And when they finish, they hand it to the next team, the next team hands it to the following team and so on. That is gonna take ages to complete. In those ages, the requirements of the customer may change. He or she may want to add a more powerful engine, for example, so that the car can move faster. Or he or she may require a different type of tires. Or perhaps he or she wants a sports car, not a family car and so on. In an Agile model, this is possible because a car is going to be developed in iterations. Each iteration is going to develop or bring about a minimal viable product. So let's see. In the first iteration, you're going to have a skateboard. Of course, a skateboard is nothing like a car, but it achieves one of your requirements, which is it has four wheels. It can get you from one place to another, just like a car can. In the second iteration, you may have a scooter. A scooter is clearly better than a skateboard, but still not a car. In the third iteration, you may have a bicycle. A bicycle is, of course, a major improvement over a skateboard, and it's much better than a scooter. In the fourth iteration, you may add a motor to the bicycle, making it a motorbike. So a motorbike is, of course, much faster than a bicycle, has more features than a scooter, and, of course, much, much better than a skateboard. But still, it's not a car. In the fifth iteration, you may have the full product delivered to the customer, which is the car. However, within those iterations, the customer is fully engaged in each and every detail. He or she is adding their comments, adding their feedback, and according to this feedback, each and every iteration is taking this feedback and converting it into features and bug fixes and so on. So using an Agile model, you not only deliver software in much less time than the waterfall model, but also the software development process is much flexible and it is more tailored towards the fast moving market of today. So what this has to do with DevOps? This is actually the very reason why DevOps came into existence. In a world where Agile model is used to develop software, where data centers are moved to the cloud, where software applications are everywhere, not just on your laptop, there needed to be a way for different teams to work together. You no longer have your developers sitting in a room and the operators sitting in another room or perhaps in another, in another building and maybe your testing team is in another floor and each and every team of those is working in total isolation from the other team. They are not aware of what the other team is doing. Developers are not having the priorities that the operations team have and both of them are not having the workflow of the testing team. This is totally against the Agile model. All those teams need to sit in one room use the same set of tools and have the same vision, the same target, and they must work together in harmony and in total orchestration. This is the essence of DevOps. It's not just a set of tools. It's not a new technology. It's a total paradigm shift. It's a new culture.
But what about the tools? You always hear about the DevOps tools that you have to master and what a DevOps engineer should have under his or her belt. Well, yes. In order to achieve this, in order to help developers build the software in successive iterations, as we have just mentioned, and to finish the iteration as fast as possible, in an agile model, a, an iteration should last no longer than two weeks. So in order to achieve this, there had to be some tools that will automate each and every repetitive task that a DevOps engineer should face. So for example, we have a tool like Git for version control. We have Vagrant for instant machine provisioning. We have Chef, Puppet, or Ansible for machine configuration management. We have Docker for application containerization, Jenkins for building pipelines between the Git repository or the software repository and different development and testing environments, even production environments, Negus for monitoring, and Selenium for automated testing. Those are just a subset of the many tools that DevOps engineers use in their daily tasks. And when speaking about agile development and software iterations, you will always hear terms like continuous, continuous integration, continuous delivery, continuous deployment. These are the results of the iterations that the Agile methodology is bringing about. The application now is in a continuous state of change. It is like a living organism, growing, evolving, and improving. So, I hope by now you have a clear idea about what DevOps is all about, why it came into existence, and why and how companies are shifting towards this new way of building software. I hope you liked this video. Please give us a thumbs up if you did. And please tell me what you want me to explain in the, in the next video, right in the comments. And if you like our content, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel to get the latest content the moment it is released. My name is Ahmed for Idionics. I hope you enjoyed this video and see you next.